This is the Self Taught or Not podcast with Dylan Israel and Eric Hanchett, where we teach you the do's and don'ts of software development from two software development professionals, one self taught and one not. Hey guys, just want to do a quick shout out to two of my courses designed to help you land those jobs or maybe jump jobs even. The 100 Front End Interview Questions Challenge designed for the front end interview specifically and the 100 Algorithm Challenge which is there for those whiteboard interviews to get yourself prepped, get yourself going and make sure that you're able to solve those very stressful and not quite fun problems. There'll be links to those in the show notes below. All right, today we have a different episode than usual. Eric and I were talking and we said, hey, man, why don't we switch things up? We started doing some interviews and we um, started doing some current events, some Q&A. And we said, why don't we do a solo podcast? You know, just talking about what we want to talk about. Sort of a one-sided conversation, very similar to our YouTube channels. And so I want to talk about some of the larger subjects that I get a lot of questions about, about how to stay motivated, um, consistency, uh, this thing I call negative role models, uh, escaping tutorial hell, mentoring, uh, really figuring out what works best for you and how to make that work for you. So that's what we're going to be talking about, a little bit of a, a smorgasbord. Now, I, I consider most of us self-taught developers, 99.9% uh, .9 of people, right? Even though traditionally speaking, most people would say that self-taught developer is somebody who doesn't have a computer science degree and you know went down a path of their own. But in the reality of the the world is that no matter how good your CS program is, most of us are going to have to learn something outside of work to be successful or outside of school to be successful. And that comes with its own challenges. You know, um, whether you're in a CS program or you're just learning on free resources like like I did uh, or a boot camp or whatever it may be, the motivation factor is one of the hardest things I think a lot of us struggle with. and a tackling this in a very practical manner is something I think is super important and remembering why. What I mean by that is, um, for those of you who are weebs like me <laughs> and have watched my, my hero academia, I'll summarize this real quick for those of you who are not. Um, but essentially there is a, you can call him a superhero, I guess that has a power and his, tr his master says to him, you know, remember your origin story when, you're in a rough situation to pull that extra oomph. And I, I, I call that in, in, in realistic uh, non-anime terms, remembering your why. And for me, it's always been something I've been able to pull on uh, at a couple different different times. And when you're going and you're saying, hey, I want to tackle this challenging thing, whether it's learning to code for a hobby, learning to code professionally to get so good that someone's going to pay you you know, $60 an hour with great benefits and everything when you don't have a degree. It's a hard task and it's not going to be easy. And those people who tell you that it is, they're, they're just lying to you to get you by their course or whatnot. Uh, it's not impossible, but it's going to be a hard path. And you have to remember why it is you're doing the things you do. Why, why are you sacrificing? And that's something that I think is very crucial to understand sacrifice. I know. This is something that in past um, relationships, I talk about sacrifice in other ways about, you know, sacrificing vacations uh, to go and and uh, plan for the future to sacrifice, you know, lifestyle uh, of not keeping up with the, you know, the Joneses to go and plan for, you know, financial investments and things that you don't get to later on. And and coding is very much like that. It takes an insane amount of hours to get good. And then it takes it's a, another good amount of hours just to get a job or to build something and and to go from there. And for me, one thing that's always helped me is just thinking about why it was I I did this to myself because it wasn't pleasant at most of the time. Like I enjoy coding, obviously, but it wasn't something that I said to myself, you know what I really want to do? Spend thousand hours learning something without any potential guaranteed payoff i always knew i'd be a software engineer but i didn't know when and that's that's almost as bad as not knowing for me what i wanted to solve and i've j made this joke before but it's true i wanted to solve poverty and hunger my own 
that was pretty much a, a very selfish goal. And as I've gone and had a career, now I want to use that, having solved that issue, to you know raise family and kids and things like that. All, all the stuff that you would expect. Um, and just have a good life that's you know stress-free. Two vacations a year, whatever it is. White picket fence, that sort of stuff. Nothing too outlandish. But when I think for a second about not taking on consulting roles or, you know, it's like, oh, I have a YouTube channel. I have my job. I have this. Oh, I can't build your course. I, I rarely say no to anything. I, I sort of figure out how to get it done. And maybe I should. But uh, when I was learning to code, remembering what was the issue I was trying to solve. And really, at the end of the day, I just felt like a loser and I was miserable and unhappy. And thinking back to how miserable and unhappy I was was something that kept me motivated on those days where I didn't want to do it, you know? And it's something I've carried on to this day, right? So I'll give you an example. Right now, I need to film eight podcasts in the next month. I need to finish two courses I've been consulted out with. And I have three other people that are interested in additional items. And I'm, I'm tired and that's okay. It's okay to be tired. It's okay as long as you're aware. So what do I do? I think about why. I think about why it is that I'm spending 80 hours a week doing this stuff and I can't do it forever, but I, I think about why to motivate myself to, to keep going and uh, to, you know, the benefits that maybe I don't see this exact moment, but that sort of compound over time and I will see them and I believe that to be true. And I think about those times where my mother brought me groceries and I just felt like a failure. I think about those times where I was sleeping on the floor. Um, you know, I, I think about those times being in the grocery store and having to choose between underwear and food and just sort of having that mental image of rock bottom that really makes it so that you, you say, okay, this sucks. But does it suck as much as my mother bringing me groceries? Because I can tell you today, I'll never let that happen again. Never, ever, ever let that happen again. And guys, that that's a that's a rock bottom. That it may not it may not sound like much to some of you, like to but to me, whether it's a pride thing or like you know, I might, I was twenty four at the time, couldn't afford to pay my rent and feed myself uh, for a month because whatever was happening in life. And that's just a, a position I didn't think I'd be in in life. And I think a lot of that happens to a lot of us. And, you know, some of us make wrong turns and have tragic paths, uh, past, not paths, I guess both, <laughs> where, you know, there are, you, you know, you go down the wrong path, whether it's drugs and alcohol or whatever it is, or just sort of, you know, living in the moment, which is fun at times, as long as you remember to plan. Um, but you live in the moment too long, you sort of, uh, the moment's gone and you just have a bad present and then you try to figure that out. And and some some people have bad past, uh, past where their rock bottom's a little deeper than it should be. And they, they're, they're happy extending that. So I think having a, a relatively low rock bottom <laughs> is is a healthy thing so that you can get by that and you can and you can move forward so as you're going and you're struggling whatever it is you're doing in life right now it's dieting for me and um and getting in shape my life is very centered around working and dating right now and i was very much so strict on my diet before i started dating somebody and then i started dating somebody and i let it last a little bit but i'm still trying to remember that why but my why was to go and meet somebody so now i gotta find new why <laughs> to be healthy and happy and things like that not as motivating for me but in all things i try to define that why and remember very vividly not just like oh this is that and if you have to you know I, I have a whiteboard that i like to write my sort of vision chart on on um where i i try and map out what it is i'm doing and where i'm trying to go and some of you may need to have that printed out on a piece of paper, handwrite it, put it right next to your monitor, wherever you're going to see it daily to remind you the path you want to be on versus the one that you're on. Or if you're already on it, how to stay on it. It's just as important. Which sort of brings me to my next point about consistency. I don't know how many people have said to me, oh, I'm bored. I can't do this every day. Or, oh, I, you know, I 
I don't want to do it. Consistency in software engineering is probably the number one item that's going to make you successful, especially early on in your career, where you're really reprogramming your brain and you're trying to figure out, how do I do this thing? Like, truly, how do I do this thing? I, I think of uh, coding very much like math at times, where it builds upon itself. Very similarly, when you started learning math at a young age, you were doing subtraction, multiplication, division, but it went subtraction, addition. And then you say, okay, cool. Uh, what'd you do with subtraction and division? Well, you practice. You went home and you did hundreds of math problems for a very long period of time. And you, you're not, you know, no one expects you to do that with software engineering, but they do expect you to practice and go through. And you say, okay, I know um, addition and subtraction, or in this case, we'll just say variables. And you go, all right, what's next? Multiplication and division, which might be maybe four loops, arrays, and objects. And you move on to more non primitive stuff. And then you go home and that builds upon it. And then you figure out how to combine it. You're like, oh, man. I can combine addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And then you move on to fractions, uh, which has always perplexed me that a lot of people really struggle with fractions from what I could tell. <laughs> well, I've never quite really understood why, but that's a separate uh, podcast, a separate topic, I suppose. But what ends up happening with math is that if you don't practice on a regular basis, you sort of fall back a couple levels, it feels like. And coding is very much like that, except to the extreme where you might take a week off. Say you were coding every day for a week or every day for a month and you took a week off, you might actually fall back two or three weeks where you didn't necessarily... The, that sort of... It's hard to retain this stuff early on because you, you don't have a practical aspect um, where... You're typically, when you're learning this stuff, you're, you're sort of in tutorial hell. And we'll talk a little bit about how to escape that in a second. But that's it's one of the, the scarier things where you say, hey, I've been working real hard. And that's something that you need to you know check yourself to when you're trying to be consistent. Where you, you know, everyone's ready to pat themselves on the back. And the item that I've seen in a lot of people is the who are successful and are able to keep that consistency is simply it simply goes down to for how long can you work hard that's it and the the truth of that is five days 40 hours a week for the average person that's the absolute truth where there's somewhat a sense of entitlement that i did my 40 for five days now i need my two days off because i earned it I I want to hesitate to I'm, I don't want to tell you not to enjoy your life. I don't want you to um, be a workaholic like myself. I'm actually trying to wind things down, uh, but new opportunities come, and I'm a believer that when opportunities knock, you answer the door because um, you never know when the, they're going to stop knocking. <laughs> uh, but if you're able to work hard for a year at a time and everyone took those weekends off and everyone you know fell back they did 5 days but they fell back too you're going to ramp up significantly faster and you're going to grow and this goes in all aspects of your life right and you may not be doing the same thing you're doing all 7 days a week right part of being consistent with coding is keeping it fun you know all everything you do in life you want to keep it fun once it starts feeling like a real job it, you start treating it like a job because you no longer enjoy it. This is why I sort of hesitate, uh, you know, I advise people that when they're considering making their hobbies, their careers, to really consider if that's something you want to go all in on and give it maybe, you know, dip your toes a bit. It's it's very much like having a, um, I'm not going to say this. I was going to say, <laughs> I guess I will. Uh, it's very much so like having a, um, of friends with benefits where you then go into a relationship and you realize maybe it's not compatible maybe what we had worked right uh, so um <laughs> i'm sure i could come up with a better example but we're doing this live baby all right so you know when you are a musician and you love music a lot of us love music a lot of us not myself per se which people find weird but most people love music 
However, most people don't want to be a musician. Most people, they think about, oh, that'd be cool to be in a band, but they don't really know what it takes and how that might even kill their love of music. I know at one point in my time before I was doing YouTube, I was streaming video games, uh, Hearthstone particularly, as a way of uh, making money. And I did it nonstop, and I did pretty good. I made like $3,000 by my third month in a, in a single month, uh, which is a lot of money uh, at the time for me. And I was very happy about it, but I was so burnt out. I just didn't enjoy gaming ever since that because it took the fun out of it. It, took the, um, it made it into a job. Now, as you go and sort of figure out how you're going to be consistent, make sure you keep it fun. Um, you know, go to meetups, do courses, build, uh, build a course if you think you can, uh, even on the tiniest thing, a little five minute blog post, read blogs, uh, watch videos, build something. You know, it doesn't always have to be this item where you're out there just doing tutorials. You're just working on projects. Progress happens in different mediums. And I think that's important for you not only to keep it fun, but also to learn what's important and have different perspectives. I, I don't ever want anybody to have a single source of truth in anything in their life, whether it's the news, whether it's, um, you know, education, multiple platforms and mediums are important so that you can see the overlap, see what's important. And also, um, see what differs and sort of think about it, right? Just don't take things at face value. Now, to be that consistent, where you're working, you're working more than the you know five days so hard. Um, you're gonna go for let's just say you want to work every day for ninety days. I think that's an at. I think that's a reasonable goal. It's gonna take some sacrifice, and I think that's important that you realize that. I you know to. To work harder than other people, you have to give up some items along the way. I know that for me to be consistent in the past, I had to get rid of things like game consoles. I had to get rid of things like friends who weren't conducive to my education that I was trying to do in coding. Um, you know, back back in the day, I when I was still in California learning to code, the only people I hung out with were people who were interested in coding. That was it. Uh, my buddy Matt Tran and I, when he was prepping for Dead Mountain Code Coding Bootcamp, all right, cool. Helped him prep. He helped me study all that sort of stuff. My my buddy Christine, who I met at some meetups, we continued to do that, and that was nice. And that that's the only other person I saw. Everybody else, I didn't have anybody else in my life <laughs> when I was going and learning to code, um, and that that was by design. I, I got rid of all the distractions. I had to make sacrifices. Was it fun? No. I clearly remember two times where um, I had to call some people in my life to, to just make sure I was making the right choice. It's not, you know, you have those moments of weakness. And I think it's important to know that these things will happen where it, all it takes is one day for you to waver off the path. That's it. Every day you have to say, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to believe. I'm going to grind. I'm going to do that every single day. And when you, when you, you know, it's, it's, you have to be ready for that because there are going to be days that's going to suck all the time. It could be, it could be a, it, it could be back to back to back to back for a while until you hit that milestone, until you feel like you're in your groove, right? And, for me to sit here and tell you that that's not going to happen is a lie. And it's, I want you to be mentally prepared for you to say, okay, I am miserable and that's okay. How am I going to overcome this? Not just focus on it, but how am I going to solve this misery? Why am I miserable? I, I just can't solve this algorithm. Okay. Go to a meetup, you know, maybe take a walk. I, you know, one thing that I've learned about software engineering is walks really help me. I take probably five walks a day around my community. And it's been something that's really helped clear my mind when I hit a good break point. Now, as you're going and you're, you know, you're sort of remembering why and you're being consistent and you've made sacrifices to be successful, whatever it is you do in your life. Um, part of the remembering why is remembering who. You know, so many people, they get aspire to be like someone successful. And that's that's good. There's people I look up to. <coughs> excuse me. My throat's very uh, dry today. That I, um, I say, you know what? I respect what they're doing. I like that they're doing it. And, um, you know, they have traits of people I want to be like. And I'm, I'm going to follow their career, follow that person and see see how they do so I can learn from them. 
that's something that's very admirable and something that you should definitely do. Now, I have found that myself and others, for that matter, when they're looking off into the distance into somebody who are who is more successful than they are, they're always okay falling short of them. And it's um sort of the old um shoot for the stars, but if you miss, at least you'll hit the moon or however that saying goes. I butcher all these metaphors, but you get the idea. What I have found worked for me is having negative role models, having people in your life um, that, or maybe hopefully they're not in your life anymore, but people who you have mental images about the things that are important to you. For, for instance, um, I have a very, I place a very big importance on financial security. This is something I've gone without in times of my life. And there's people close to me who are retirement age, who don't have anything that are, you know, they're on disability or, or welfare or people who are close to me that, um, I love to death, but I see the challenges that that life has and the stress that it's caused over the years. And I, I say to myself, um, that won't be me, right? I go into um, grocery stores and no judgments, right? I, I've delivered pizzas. I've worked at grocery stores, all these sorts of places. And I I see, you know, the, the elderly man or woman who clearly shouldn't be working anymore, but doesn't have a choice, you know? And it's, um, it's scary for me because it's not, it's not the life I want to live. Um, you know, I, I would, I'd like to think that by the time I'm a grandfather that I can enjoy the time with my grandchildren and my family and, you know, sons or daughters or whatever my life may be. And that if I'm working, it's because I want to, not because I have to. And that's always really been my goal with, with finances is to give yourself options. There's been other uh, negative mentors and why, why negative mentors? Why are they, you know, these negative role models, uh, rather that I, I focus on. I, it, it goes back to visualization and sort of remembering who you want to be. And so there's these moments in time where, you know, if you visualize something, I, I really do like thinking about like, you know, closing my eyes, thinking about what it is and it's just visualizing it. And I visualize these people who uh, most of the time, no judgments. And in the finance case, there's other ones I make clear judgments on. And we'll talk about that in a second. Where I look at them and I say, that's not going to be me. And instead of running towards the successful person, you're okay falling short. I'm running like hell to make sure they don't catch me. And that's how I look at it. And I find that, you know, when you start thinking about it like that, what ends up happening is you end up running faster towards the goal because it's the opposite of what you want to make sure you don't want to be like. Um, you know, I, I find the negative role models very, very motivating at times. And, you know, there are going to be the ones that sometimes there'll be family members or people close to you. And sometimes they're going to be strangers that you go and you, you meet them and, and you, you know, I, one, one thing I've talked about is about the guy who basically shit on me because I was a pizza delivery driver doing YouTube tutorials at, the first or second meetup where I was meeting a fan and he basically, I didn't know a pizza de delivery driver could do coding tutorials. And I was like, okay, okay. And that was one of those moments where it was so out of the blue, but I, I made a mental note of this guy in the essence of, um, I don't ever want to be so full of myself to feel so threatened. And so it's part of the reason I, I've done education. I'm not perfect man by any means, but I, I want to, I want other people to su succeed and your success is my success and, and to a degree, right? Uh, not that I did anything other than try to guide you. Um, one of the great things about trying to mentor people, and that's really what I think like my YouTube channel is, this podcast is, you know, I consider Eric and I mentors to a degree where we are mentoring people on a, in a digital way is that all we can do and all I can do is point you in the direction and you got to run. That's it. I can give you this, this knowledge, 
<laughs> and say, run full speed in that direction. And you, you have to decide what to do that. You have to say, maybe Dylan knows. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe I believe him. Maybe I don't. But I can only put out what I know to be true with the hopes that you'll go out there and crush it. And that's really what I, I hope happens. And the last thing I'll leave you with on here as you go and sort of figure out you know, how to be in the right mindset. Cause this is all about mindset. One of the most, one of the, one of the best things you can do to be successful in your life in whatever it is you do is just having the right mindset so that, you know, maybe at first it doesn't come naturally, but consistency in all things make, you know, create sort of a muscle memory, even in your mannerisms and, and the way you think is figure out what works for you. Um, you know, I, I'm a two time college dropout. I have 216 completed credits and I have no bachelor's degree because I just kept on trying to force myself to do something I just wasn't happy doing. And when I stopped doing that and I figured out what was going to work for me, that was how I started being successful in the items I wanted, started making the progress and the gains I always wanted. And there's various other items like that, but not everybody's going to learn the same way. Not everything's going to work the same way. You know, so try things out. Don't be afraid to quit things either. You say something clearly isn't working for you. It's hard. You know, one of the things that I think made me an adult was when I was willing to drop out of college because I knew it wasn't working for me and I had a plan on how to succeed other ways. And, you know, dropping something, but very much like a bad relationship where you've invested time, energy, money uh, <laughs> into things, maybe not in a relationship, uh, but you then go and end it without any you know accomplishment but that in itself is an accomplishment you know you don't want to throw good time after bad time or good money after bad money sometimes you have to cut your losses and go on to the next endeavor and if you're not willing to do that then you're you may not be giving yourself the chance to go and try different items and try to figure out what works for you so like the whole thing about escaping tutorial hell it's all about just building stuff it's all about trying stuff and not being afraid to get stuck on a project. If if you want to escape tutorial hell, all you have to do is get started. You're going to get stuck immediately. And then you got to Google and debug. You got to Google and debug. Got to Google and debug. That's it. That's how you escape tutorial hell. There's no other way. You stop doing tutorials and you just Google every single line of code. You say, okay, I want to build a project. Cool. What I want to use. I don't know. And then you say, what are people building projects in, web web projects in? And then you do it and you're like, okay, this guy says React. This guy says View. I don't know the difference. What's the difference? And you just start going down the rabbit hole like anything else and trying it. And when you get stuck, you say, how do I create a variable again? And just Google it. You know, find find the direction. And it 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 sounds silly to a degree, but that's really it. It's that simple. You just stop. You leave it. You know, it's and you move on. And so you, you quit those tutorials and you just start building stuff. So um, with all that being said, guys, please um, don't be too hard on yourself and whatever you do in your life. Um, I consider myself a failure at many of things in life. And I think those aren't necessarily failures or else so much as lessons is the uh, cliche saying. And, you know, you're going to stumble. You're going to fall. Remember why it is that you chose to be a software engineer. Try and figure out how you can be more consistent. Remember that sacrifice is going to be part of the process in anything you want to be great at. Have those people that you look up to, but also have those people that you want to run like hell from. And, you know, find the right mentors for you and remember what works for you because that's most important. Hope you guys enjoyed this and take out, check out the next episode. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to find more about what I'm up to, go to dylanisrael.com. And if you want to know what I'm up to, you can check out my website at eric.video. If you haven't already, please leave us a five-star review on iTunes. It really helps us out. And if you do, you might even be featured on our next episode. Don't forget to check out the website at selftaughtornot.com. From there, you can sign up for a mailing list where we give away free courses and a bunch of cool stuff. And we'll also let you know when the next episode comes out. And finally, if 
you didn't know, we have a Facebook group. It's called Code Tech and Caffeine. We have over 10,000 members, and you can find the link at selftaughtornot.com. So come join us. We have tons of developers willing to help you guys, mentor you guys. Check it out. Just make sure you go to selftaughtornot.com and check out the Code Tech and Caffeine link. Thanks, and take care. Thank you.